Hello my friends, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to do a review about a game, Taxi Life City Driving Simulator Barcelona. The game can be categorized as a driving simulator and will cost you at the moment I make this review $29.99 on Steam. It is available for PC and the PlayStation platform. The one I will be playing is the PC version that was released on 7th of March 2024. You are in one of the most visit-worthy cities in the entire world and you can discover its beauty while cruising through the streets. I didn't have to think twice before I bought it. BeamNG is a fantastic sandbox game, but it wasn't tailored to be the chill driving experience I was looking for. Out of the box, it lacks a lot of the ambience you would experience for driving a car around in a city. And that atmosphere is exactly why this game got my attention. The first impression was not too good to be honest. I got caught in reading some reviews on uh, Steam while I waited for the download to finish and found out that there were quite a lot of negative comments about this game. I decided to shake those off and connected my Camo C12 and fired up the game. Scrolling through the settings menu, I couldn't get the wheelbase to work with it. I looked for an official list of compatible wheelbases but didn't find any initially. I had read that someone used a Logitech G920, so I connected the Logitech G923 Xbox Edition to the computer and restarted the game once more. After doing that, I was set to go. Or at least I thought. The Xbox compatible Logitech G923 had some buttons reversed and it made setting up the wheelbase a bit too difficult for my liking. The creation of a profile and specifically giving in text was also not really easy and clearly optimized for console and ported to PC. After particularly frustrating first 20 minutes, I decided to just shift to the Logitech G Pro PlayStation Edition in G923 compatibility mode. At least that would help a bit with the button issues I had. I think I just described already plenty of the negative reviews on Steam in what I said now. When I read in the description of the game that it was compatible with most steering wheels out there, I formed the assumption that my Camo C12 would work, but it didn't. The list of available wheelbases is limited and it's important that you check this before you buy it, uh, if it supports your steering wheel or not. I also feel that the wheelbases that are compatible need to be revised somewhat for their functionality in general. When it comes to manual shifters, only the Logitech shifter is supported at this moment. The first thing you will need to do after the tutorial is visit your garage. As part of the simulator, you will need to maintain your car. Maintaining means keeping it clean, technically in order and charged or fueled up. The mechanism is pretty straightforward and a completely up and running car is but a few clicks and a few hundred euro away. There is a choice of seven different cars with different motorization, transmission and seating positions in the game. You start off with a very decent automatic car, the Aphelion. You can buy and sell these cars as you see fit. You can upgrade your cars with parts, improving traction, brakes or just convert the transmission. Another part of upgrading would be the cosmetics. Silently I was hoping for a Luc Besson kind of customization, but it is kind of limited. I wouldn't mind some uh, custom car liveries to be added or some extra body kits. The game also offers a choice to employ other drivers and assign cars to them and earn you some money. While not crucial for the simulation experience, it's always nice to have some added story to the game. Apart from management, there is also a skill tree which will allow you to unlock certain perks. While leveling up, you will also unlock long distance drives and VIP transportation. Again, a nice add which you don't have to overthink, but that will keep the game more interesting. Then it is time for your first drive. After looking at your minimap, you will see the entire list of available points of interest. These include your garages, customers, monuments, speed cameras, roadworks and more. You mark a target and have a route set towards them on your GPS. The first thing you notice when you drive is how vibrant the city feels with a pseudo AI around. Sometimes their actions lack a bit of intelligence on foot or in the car, but in a way it does remind me a lot of driving around in the traffic of Brussels. It's also never easy to implement these types of behaviors in games, both for development as hardware requirements, so I think that what you get is already quite decent and certainly a big plus for the game. A last very immersive positive point of this AI is that it can really tick you off at times. 
there is also just a lot to see in the city. You never have the feeling you are driving around in the same area. There are of course points that you will use a lot, but you already have quite a big playground to drive around in. I am not sure to what degree this really is genuine to Barcelona, but I can say with confidence that it feels like I am driving around in Barcelona. Your customers are a few generic templates uh, where the developers were kind of lazy when writing it. Uh, female voices on male characters and vice versa. It just feels sloppy. In general, the entire customer sensation that uh, you have feels as a weak part of the simulator. Sure, some interacted with you, but well, strangely enough, the only ones that talked were tourists that spoke English. Most of the interactive dialogue that I got was how gross the stain on my windows was or that I should drive more carefully. There's, there, there is something big on the window. You swipers. While it doesn't seem important, details are key often. Some random Spanish talking guy telling you a dad joke, uh, someone complaining about the weather or a group of drunken English supporters would add so much immersion to it all. Some of the details I did like were the presence of the Guardia Civil, the traffic lights, roadworks and speed cameras. They all force you to adapt somewhat to a normal driving style. To have a decent immersion in the game, the effects the game can generate is really important. I have driven already with a lot of games and hardware and some combinations can be very impressive. This game is not one of them. The range of force feedback is limited to hitting other cars, sidewalks and speed bumps in the road. It all feels very incoherent and unnatural. Any condition of the road is yeah, missing and it doesn't end there. At moments your steering wheel will start to oscillate for no reason, you get jolts of force pushing you into a parked car or it just doesn't let you drive off the curb. Those are very annoying moments and they break the entire immersion of the game. In my humble opinion, fixing this for the available steering wheels should be the first priority of the development team. It takes some patience and even stress when you struggle through the setup, tutorial and first driving with the simulator. But then it becomes dark. You find yourself in a calmer city and are able to control the car much better through the narrow streets of this amazing place. Picking up silent customer after silent customer and delivering them safely to their destination while gawking around at the many beautiful monuments and surroundings. It is at that moment that you can actually enjoy the game completely. Sure, I got uh, random force feedback thump or glitch from time to time, but I got used to it and just corrected and continued on my journey. Perhaps after a while, I will get tired of driving around in Barcelona, but also perhaps if the devs get the framework a point and stable, we will get to see new beautiful cities from the driver's sides of our taxis. If you read the reviews on Steam, something that comes back is that it feels like an unfinished game. And it is really. Ealor. Well, it can only improve, and honestly, for a game that costs about 15 liters of petrol, I already drove around 500 kilometers with it. That is crazy mileage. It's a welcome addition to the racing, trucking, off roading, and sandbox simulators we already have. From the personal experience I have with it, I enjoyed it. It reminded me of old times when petrol was still affordable and cars still made noise. I would just drive around for the fun of driving. This game comes really close and especially the night drives were brilliant. Personally, I look forward to using this with my Thrustmaster Shifter, Next Level Racing HF8 and Camus Wheel. But of course for this, the devs still have some work to do figuring out the force feedback. I read they only had the Logitech G29 at their disposal during developing, so perhaps that someone that sees this video and lives near Krakow can lend them a Trustmaster T818 so they use it to implement it for this game. Thank you all for watching this video, leave a like if you had something from it and if you have a comment being uh, if you like this game, if you would want to play it or something or what is missing in your opinion, please put it in the comments. I will see you all next video. Bye bye.